10 random magic cards rated day number 41 everybody we've made it into the 41s can you imagine let's look at the first card of the day happy monday y'all it's night squad commando three mana two and a black for a two three human soldier when it etbs if you attacked this turn you get a one one white human creature uh, soldier token not great <laughs> i do remember when this was originally printed in ikoria and i thought like okay Three, four worth of stats on two guys for three mana, you know, maybe it creates two bodies. It's good in like soldiers. Maybe it's good in humans. Maybe it's good in aristocrats. It's good in apparently none of those things. It's just barely not good enough in any of those decks. So I'm going to give it a 4.7 to start off our week, everybody. We get better from there, right? Insatiable Frugivore up next. This is in Bloomboro Commander, and I have not seen it yet. Four mana, three and a black for a 2-4 Rat Berserker. When it enters, create a food token. Then you may exile three cards from your graveyard. If you do, repeat this process. You can pay three and a black and sack X foods, and creatures you control get plus X plus zero and gain menace until end of turn. Okay, so... Whew, four mana, two, four, make a food token no matter what. If you can exile three from your graveyard, create at least two food tokens, if not more. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and then, of course, it's got this sort of anthem little effect on here that can break through combat. I like it in a food deck. I don't like it in too much more, though. Um, probably good in that squirrels deck that they want you to play. <laughs> they want to sell to you. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to give this, man, a 4-mana 2-4 that always at least makes one food. That's just draft, right? But the moment it makes two foods, and this, this activated ability ain't bad either. So let's give this a 5.28. I think that's probably what it deserves. We'll move on to Swamp. Um, one of my favorite Swamp arts. There's not much to it. There's really not much to it, but that's a Swamp, isn't it? 5.0 as all basic lands get. Um, here is Lanura. Yanura? It's a Plains, everybody. Our art looks really, really good, actually, on this. I like this art. Kind of a lot, really. It's good art. Moving on is Talisman of Indulgence, a magic card. This is two mana for an artifact. You can tap it for a colorless, or you can tap it to add black or red to your pool. It does damage to you if you do that, though. Still solid. Talismans are always solid. They could go in your commander deck, or they could not. Either way, they're pretty good. They're fine. You'll play them sometimes. <laughs> I'll give this card a 6.7. No, I won't. I'll give this card a 6.8. It's pretty good. Moving on is the Grand Calcutron. Calculon! Next is actually... Artificer's Assistant, because that last card was an uncard. This is a blue mana for a 1-1 bird with flying. Whenever you cast a historic spell, scry one. Sick. Awesome card. <laughs> just everything you want to get started with in your artifacts deck and commander, right? Or just your artifacts deck in some other formats, but it doesn't really see play anywhere in like 60 card 1v1s. But I could see playing this. If like the rest of my deck is historic, it'd be a fun one. But I'll give this card a 5. Straight up 5. Good little flying man. And I like good flying men, but we're moving on to War Storm Surge here. Six mana, five, and a red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. Awesome. A pandemonium effect that only works for you, right? Like a Terror of the Peaks, basically. Really, really cool card here, too. It's been printed a lot of times for different commander stuff because it's so sick. Six mana is a ton for this effect, but who cares? Who actually cares about that? <laughs> you know, infinite creature combos, much like, you know, impact trimmers and such. Infinite creature combos end up just killing all the opponents at the table, which is pretty sick. No attacks, you know, no waiting on, you know, uh, having to attack and none of your dudes have haste. So everyone has sweepers cause for that one turn, of course, because it wouldn't be any other way. No, just right out. Everyone's dead. Um, Red actually has multiple effects like this besides just Impact Trimmers and Pandemonium. They have multiple things like this, Terror of the Peaks. So I always like stuff like this when I see it. Um, I'm going to give this card a 6.9. Let's go that far with it. I think I will, man. I just, I, I love stuff like this too much. I really do. Strands of Night up next here. This is four mana, two and two black for an enchantment. You can pay two black and pay two life and sacrifice a swamp to return target creature card from your graveyard uh, to play. That's actually not bad, everybody. Originally printed in Weatherlight. This is the art that I'm much more familiar with. That 7th edition foil costs $40 because it's a 7th edition foil. Note the normal version of this only costs 33 cents if you want it from 7th edition. <laughs> 45 cents from... Um, from Weatherlight and 35 if you want to strike a balance 35 
from Classic Six. I've always liked this card. I do. You usually can't use it until turn five. Now, you could like Dark Ritual and use it, but then you got to set up your graveyard stuff, right? So there are ways to use this, but having an enchantment on the table that just lets you reanimate stuff, I don't care if I have to sack lands to it. I really do not. This is a much better card than people think it is. I have played it in Commander decks before. Um, I have used it. <laughs> I've actually used the card too. But I am much more likely to use a card like Phyrexian Reclamation or something, an enchantment like that um, in the now time. But I still do like this card, and I'm going to give it a 5.9. Try it. If you haven't tried this card, try it out in your Commander deck. You'll be surprised. It's not actually that bad. Moving on to Psychic Theft, though. Ooh, it's printed in Prophecy and only in Prophecy. Two mana, one in a blue for a sorcery. Look at target player's hand. Choose an instant or sorcery card from it. Remove that card from the game. You may play the card as though it were in your hand as long as the card remains removed from the game. At end of turn, if you haven't played the card, return it to its owner's hand. So you get one turn, actually. Despite what the card actually says, you get one turn to play that card. Um, yeah, that's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. They really skunked it at the end. I was reading it the whole time like, wait a minute. <laughs> And you get to the end, you're like, okay, it's terrible. But I guess, why is it a sorcery, too? It really should be an instant. That really hurts the card a lot. Um, but I guess you could play a removal spell out of their hand. Something like that. You could also set up your big play by, like, psychic thefting. And then, like, getting the counter spell out of their hand. And th that wouldn't work. They just counter the psychic theft. Well, maybe not. Maybe they wouldn't, right? But, yeah, you take the counter spell out of their hand. Even if you, even if they do counter the psychic theft, you still took the counter spell out of their hand, right? And you play your big thing. I don't know. It could work. It's just pretty bad. It's pretty bad, dude. Um, wow. Uh, 1.6. Being a little hard on it, but it, it's pretty bad. Uh, Thespian Stage. I just mentioned you the other day, everybody. This is uh, <laughs> just a land that taps for colorless. Or you can pay two and tap it and have it become a copy of a target land, except it has this ability. So it becomes that land for as long as you want it to. Right? So... Dark depths, you know, it's, <laughs> I feel, I feel like it used to be a combo. I'm not even sure that works. <laughs> I'm not actually even sure that works. Um, but still this, this has been, you know, a combo with a few different things. And if nothing else, you know, combo it with, uh, dumb lands. <laughs> like, the, I don't know, man, there's, there's a bunch of things you can do with this. And I don't want to be here all day. Basically that's being staged is just a good card. Just is a good card. I feel like we've actually already talked in this series about like five different lands you can thespian stage and copy. So creature lands, obviously, just a sort of baseline good reason to use this. But tons of lands are incredible to copy with stage. I've always liked this card. Always will. And there will always be a place for it in Magic, right? So I'm going to give stage a 7.1. Um, mostly because most lands get a 7 something, right? I mean, most, most lands are just good. Um, by themselves and thespian stage can be any land in the game 10 right <laughs> but, oh it's more halt more halt elves dragon everybody a poor little guy from legends um and chronicles as you see six mana three two red and a green for a four six legend with rampage one that means whenever it becomes blocked it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each creature blocking it beyond the first so if they try to double block it it becomes a five seven they triple block it it becomes a six eight right so it's really not easy to gang up on a guy like this but what this is is a six mana four six awful awful like most of the legends from legends absolutely terrible not a good magic card two we'll give it a two it can attack it can block it's a big dude it has a keyword ability you can lie to your opponents you can be like oh actually rampage means um it does one times 10 damage to you. It's rampage times 10, whatever the number is. So it does 10 damage to you when it attacks. It's a really good card. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but rampage is, is an undersung ability, an underused ability, and that's for a reason. It's kind of not that great. So let's move on to Ruinous Path. Three mana, one and two black for a sorcery. Destroy a creature or planeswalker and awaken four for seven mana. So you can cast it for seven mana. Uh, and that also means you get four plus one plus one counters on one of your dudes, on one of your lands. Uh, and that land gets haste. So this did see some play in standard as like a one of, two of in some decks. Because you'd be surprised how often you just have seven mana and then kill your opponent's best guy and get a four four. It doesn't win the game, but it's really good. It's so good. Better than you think. So and in the meantime, it's just a serviceable removal spell. Although not a great one, but serviceable, yes. So I like this card. I will give it a 5.4.
we'll go there with it. Pretty middling day, honestly, guys. We did see some good ones, though, but still not bad for a Monday. It wasn't nothing but terrible cards. And that's good. That, that brings us hope for the rest of our week. And I'll see you then. I'm Deb from The Place. Bye.